Good evening, I'm Emma Jane Vair and this is Television Tonga News. In the headlines, the Japanese government provides a grant worth 2 million US dollars to the Tongan government. The Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries and Food approves its first loan from its 300,000 baht fund to local fishermen. And a training encourages the community to ensure that the water supply is safe for human consumption. These are more stories, including news from the Pacific, sports, world and the weather information later on in this bulletin. Let's take a look at the news in detail. The Honourable Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs, Lord Duvano, has signed a grant of aid agreement with two million US dollars from the Japanese government. The signing ceremony took place yesterday with the visiting parliamentary senior Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Noro Mitsuya, representing the Japanese government. Linda Filiai was there and filed this report. The signing of the aid agreement between Tonga and the Japanese government was held at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. According to information from the Prime Minister's office, the non-project grant assistance comes under the Japanese government's grant aids for provision of Japan Small and Medium Enterprises Products 2013. During the signing ceremony, Lord Tuvano says, Tong is looking forward to a closer collaboration with Japan in areas of trade and investment. Japan's Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Norio Mitsuya, is in Tonga for two days. In his remark, he said, the aid will support Tonga's development efforts to address its economic and social need by utilizing the friendly technology of Japan, small medium enterprises. Mr. Mitsuya added, this will also mark the long-standing gorgeous friendship between the two countries. While in Tonga, Japan's Vice Foreign Minister Mr. Mitsuya visited various projects funded by the Japanese government, including the newly redeveloped Viola Hospital, the new Sakula Hilala Japanese Language Center at Tonga Institute of Education, and also the MV Otwanga Ofa. The signing ceremony was attended by the Honorable Fanetupo Vavautu Ivagano, the Japanese Ambassador to Tonga, His Excellency Dr. Kashushika Hamuro, Japanese counterparts, and other stakeholders. From the Magistrate Court, police have arrested two men in connection to the death of a 44-year-old Asian man in 2012. Today, a 33-year-old Asian man and a 28-year-old Tongan man were charged with the murder of the Asian man, whose body was discovered in an electrical workshop on the one-way road. This occurred June 15th in 2012. The pair remain in police custody until further notice of a bail, which will be determined by the Supreme Court investigation into the case continues. In a separate case, police have confirmed the identity of an Asian man who died at Viola Hospital last Friday. 31-year-old Dao Xin was a Chinese national who was found unconscious in his shop at Halaleva. He was discovered on Thursday, February 20th, around midnight, and admitted to Viola Hospital, where he later died. An autopsy has been completed, but de uh, details are yet to be released until other evidence is provided. No arrests have been made regarding this case. The Ministry of Agriculture, Food, Forestry and Fisheries has released its first loan from its funds for local fishermen. The Honourable Fisheries Minister Sangsta Saulala signed an agreement today to release a loan to a local fishing company. This is held at the Ministry's main office at the Quintalote Wharf. Salamu Fulivai was there and filed this report. This is the Honourable Minister for Agriculture, Food, Forestry and Fisheries, Sengstar Saulala, as he signed an agreement to officially release the fund to Daisina Fuko and his fishing company. Mr Saulala says this fund was set up this year to make loans more accessible to local fishermen. This loan is for 45,000 baanga. It's approved to the first recipient of the loan, which is a local fishing company. The aim of this loan is to help the fishing industry and to boost the economy. The owner of the local fishing company, Daisy Nafuko, thanks to the Ministry for accepting his request for a loan. He adds that it will help them with their various activities and operations. The fishing company is expected to pay back the amount within six months, along with its 1% interest. Cabinet has previously approved to provide a fund of 300,000 baanga for local fishermen to loan from, with an interest of 1%. For Television Tonga News, I'm Salama Fulivai. 
From the magistrate court, the Crown prosecutors dropped all charges against two Asian nationals. A woman and a man were alleged for the possession of an illegal passport. Min Wang was charged with three counts, while Nai Yang Cheng was charged with six counts of holding false passports. Wang was also alleged for the possession, usage and having no legal authority to use an illegal passport while Nai Yang Cheng was alleged for abetting Wang to commit a crime. The principal magistrate, Salas Mathi, says the decision is based on Section 21 in the Passport Act, which is not yet effective. The media plays a crucial role in informing the public on a stable democratic transition. Other roles include informing the public on the alternative of democracy and how it will help promote human rights and the freedom of media, among other matters. The Director of Asia Pacific Governance, Democracy Initiative and Research Program of the East West Centre based in Honolulu, Dr. Shabir Chima, highlights this during the opening of the 2014 Jefferson Fellowship Program, which is underway in Hawaii. Here's Sinilatu with more on that story. The 2014 Jefferson Fellowship Program in Honolulu is attended by 15 journalists, news reporters, and producers from Asia and the Pacific countries. Tonga is represented by radio and television Tonga's senior news reporter, Fadai Fainga'a. The fellowship prioritizes the importance and effectiveness of media's roles in shaping a country's democratic system that is stable for its people and future generations. According to Fadai Fainga'a, Dr. Jima said some of the factors needed to promote a better democracy is ample time for the changes to process and for people to understand and adapt to the transition or the changes. Dr. Jima said one indicator that can measure democracy in a country is whether its media is independent or a government's propaganda. The 2014 Jefferson Fellowship Program will continue to Indonesia and Myanmar, where participants will take part in the International Media Freedom Conference in Yangon, Myanmar, next month. Radio and television Tonga news reporter Ms. Fatai Fainga'a's Jefferson Scholarship is funded by Government of the United States of America. Other recipients of the program are from Pakistan, Afghanistan, Indonesia, India, Taiwan, China, Philippines, Myanmar, the United States of America. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sinilato. Clean water for human consumption is emphasised in a week-long training for Kolomotua residents. The Kolomotua town officer says about 90% of homes get their drinking water from water tanks. Anasiu Falikauna was there and filed this report. The Kolomotua town officer, Sio Tuiano, says the clean water training has had a good impact on the community. <laughs> The Ministry of Health highlights the importance of boiling rainwater before drinking it. He says it shows that people are doing this as the hospital has not received any cases on TB or typhoid in a while, and this is related to the consumption of unclean water. The program is organized by the Tonga Community Development Trust. It aims at educating the community on ineffective water supply systems. According to the Deputy Director, Papilo Foliaki says, during the week-long program, they will also test the various water supplies or water tanks in the Kolomotua district in order to determine the level of hygiene. <laughs> Women need to start from home and find out just how safe their water is for drinking. We have an officer here that can carry out those tests. Participants will be asked to provide a sample of water from home for testing. The Treasurer of Tonga Trust, Kalolaine Kabafiafi, says that similar training will be carried out in the villages such as Bea and Kanukupolu. Residents from the areas of Sop, Otaufa, Ahau, Isileli and Kolomotua are taking part in this training. The program is funded by the European Union in collaboration with Australian Aid. For Television Tonga News, I'm Manasiu Falekaono. The Australian and Tonga Red Cross acknowledges the importance of providing mental and spiritual counselling to victims of any natural disaster. This has prompted a special training for local counsellors to be able to effectively deliver such assistance. Fanongavik Goso has more on that story. A one-week training aims to sharpen the skills and knowledge of local counsellors about how best to help people suffering from a natural disaster. 
It's also held to help those in Hapai who are still suffering from the impacts of the tropical cyclone Ian. The Tonga Red Cross project manager, Eva Ipomana Tuholaki, says a number of participants were selected from various sectors. These participants are trained to counsel the people in Hapai, which was struck by a tropical cyclone. They are trained to be able to talk to people, listen to them, and provide whatever help is needed both mentally and spiritually. There are 12 participants in the program who will be dispatched to Hapai next week. We are selecting volunteers who are mature, people can relate to and feel free to, to talk, and who are good at listening and counselling. These volunteers understand that all the information shared with them is confidential and serious, and it is not a joke. The program was officially opened by the Australian High Commissioner to Tonga, His Excellency Brett Aldham. The training is funded by the Australian Red Cross and estimated at more than 30,000 per anga. Similar programs will also be carried out in Mava'u. Facilitating the training is a psychosocial expert from Australia, Sue Sweeney. For Television Tonga News, I'm Fonomi Kosong. That's local news. Pacific is up next.